Hey guys, this is Tiffany Nguyen, and I'm so excited to have you guys join me for my class today. I'm a travel photographer from Los Angeles, and I've been shooting for about six years now. I primarily focus on travel, landscape, lifestyle, um, but honestly, I like shooting a variety of different things. So today I'm going to be teaching you about one of my favorite subjects, understanding the rules and techniques of composition. I definitely think this is one of the most important parts of photography. Um, you know, so we're going to learn how to shoot with intention and also how to capture these images that tell a story. I want to show you guys how to turn, you know, a basic photo into an epic photo. Every photo tells a story. So I think the more that we can include into a shot, the better the story that we can tell. Um, so we're also going to learn how to frame up your shots, how to utilize your natural surroundings and know when and where to place your subject in order to help elevate that photo. So I truly think that photography is one of the best ways to tell a story. For me personally, I love photography because, you know, it's a creative outlet for me to share my own story. And for me, I love sharing stories through imagery. It also gives you an opportunity to share your own perspective on something. Um, I think what's so cool is that you can go out and shoot with a group of photographers, but, you know, everyone's going to go out and capture different types of images. Everyone's going to be editing, you know, their photos differently. And so really, you can be as creative as you want. And I just think that it's so much fun to be able to do that. So I'm going to help you train your eyes so that when you're out in the field, you can start utilizing these different um, techniques and tricks that we talk about in order to capture the best photos possible. All right, so let's jump right in. So these are some of the rules and techniques of composition um, that I like to use when I'm shooting. And we're going to go over each of these individually so you guys have a better idea of um, how to use each of them. And I think something that's really helpful is that I'm going to show examples of photos that I've taken to kind of act as like visual aids for you guys. Um, I think it's one of the best ways to learn, especially as photographers. A lot of us are visual learners, so um, it's going to help when we have examples um, when we go over each of these. And I'm also going to explain to you what's going on in my head um, when I took these shots. Um, I think it's fun to understand the process and this way you can implement um, these, different, these different things in your own photos as well. So this first technique here, negative space, um, this is probably the technique that I use the most in my photos. I'm constantly looking for negative space when I'm, um, when I'm shooting. Um, I'm looking for the space around my subject. And what is this space exactly? Um, it's basically an empty area in your composition that you're looking for to place your subject um, because it adds contrast between your subject and also the background. So adding a subject to your composition, as you can tell, I love adding subjects in my shots, I think it really tells a much more powerful story. And so when you're out in the field, try to look for this negative space um, so you can place your subject here. And in this first example here, this is a photo I took of my friend in Oregon. And I love that she's wearing this red jacket. Uh, if you know my photos, you know I'm probably going to be having my subject wear something that kind of pops and makes them stick out. So when we got to this spot, there was this epic waterfall here with like the basalt columns in the back. Um, right away, I knew that I wanted to place my subject in a negative space. So I wanted to have her entire body um, with like this white curtain behind her with like this powerful waterfall. And as you can tell, she really pops. And we also got super lucky that there was a, a, like a little puddle that I got very low to get this shot. So I was able to get her reflection um, also in the negative space, um, which is on honestly pretty rare to have a shot like this, I think. so. I was very excited to get this shot. So as you can see, I placed it in the negative space. So there's no distractions here. Your eyes automatically drawn to the subject. Um, and there's no, there's no guessing what's the main focus of this shot. So that's a great example of negative space. This second shot here um, was shot in Iceland. Um, this is actually a photo of myself. It's a self portrait that I took um, in Iceland out of hot springs. So I set up a tripod here and it took me forever to get this shot. I think if you, if you didn't know the story behind this, you'd be like, oh, that's awesome. Like you got so lucky. There was no one there. Um, absolutely not. There were so many people here. I just kind of had to wait for the right window, the right moment. And I remember there were so many times where I hit the shutter, went back in the water and like there were people there. So a lot of trial and error for this shot. But again, this is just another example of negative space. Um, you see that there's nothing um, around the top of my head or also like where the reflection um, of my upper body is in the water. There's nothing around it that's distracting. Um, the upper body and the reflection are both in the negative space. So the next technique we're gonna go over is how to use a natural frame to kind of highlight your subject. Um, when I'm out shooting, I try to find 
different things in my natural surrounding to help frame my shot. So when I arrive at my first location, I don't usually just grab my camera and start shooting. I like to walk around, um, kind of look for different angles and different, different perspectives. So this is a super fun technique where you can get creative and really find a more interesting composition. So this first shot here on the left, um, I took this photo in Banff at Pato Lake. And, you know, just looking at the final product of the shot, I think, I think you can agree that it's a really cool shot where there's a natural framing with the trees. But if you saw me taking this photo, you'd probably be laughing and wondering, like, what is she doing? I was literally crouching down, you know, holding the leaves with like one hand, my camera on the other hand like getting between these two branches and just looking super awkward to be honest. But um, what I was seeing through my viewfinder was completely different. So, you know, again, look for a natural frame because you can get an awesome shot, um, just a landscape shot. But when you can add a little flair to your shots, add a little bit of creativity, you can really elevate the photo. And then the photo on the right here, this is a classic shot of the Golden Gate Bridge. Um, this is one of my favorite shots. I really liked how I used the trees to frame up the Golden Gate Bridge and the lighting here. I shot this during golden hour. Um, I think my favorite part about it um, are the birds. A lot of people, you know, may add birds and they may Photoshop birds into their shot, but this was a real photo with just tons of birds flying around that day. So when I arrived at this spot and I saw what was happening in the scene, I got so excited and yeah, finally got the shot that I wanted here. So depth of field. Whenever you're taking any photo, you want to decide which part of your photo you want to have most in focus. And so generally, I would say that your subject um, is usually what you want to have in focus, but that's not always the case. Um, and with these examples, I'm going to show you exactly what I mean here. So the photo on the left, this is a picture of my friend's really cute dog named Finn. Um, we shot this on a hike in Washington. And as you can see, this photo is extremely sharp. Um, and what's happening here is that Finn is in, is in focus and he's very, very sharp and the background is bokeh. So that means that the, the background is blurred out, which actually will bring more attention to the subject and makes the dog pop more. So that's a trick that you can play around with. And I think I shot this at F 2.8. Um, if I shot this at, let's say F 11, then we're going to see Finn and also the background both um, closer in focus together. So it's going to be a different look, but I kind of like this this look, um, especially when I'm shooting portraits or animals. I really like this bokeh look. And now with the photo on the right, I did something a little bit different. This photo I took in Yosemite during the fall. And usually a shot like this, I would say, I would want to have the mountain in focus. Like that's my main subject. Um, but here, you know, I, I really like fall colors and I just thought these yellow leaves were so awesome. Like kind of three of them, like, uh, just sitting right above the water in my foreground. So um, for this shot in particular, I had the leaves in focus and then I had Yosemite, um, the scene of Yosemite, so like Half Dome, all those trees in the background, I had that all bokeh out. And so it's just a completely different look and the decision of what's in focus is totally up to you. Um, it's really personal, it's really a personal preference. So what's cool about this technique is that you can make it completely your own and honestly just have fun with it. So play around through different settings, and yeah, I think you guys can create something really cool by just using depth of field. When I'm composing a shot, I'm thinking about how I can create a well-balanced photo. So what does this mean exactly? Um, a well-balanced photo to me has a foreground, midground, and background. And when you have a picture with all three of these elements, it's a slam dunk. Um, so let's talk about these two photos here. The photo on the left, I took this in Norway, and the story behind this shot is I remember waking up super early um, before the sun even came up. We had our headlamps on, we're looking for the trail, and pretty much right when we got to the spot was when the sun started rising right, right above those mountains on the right, and I was rushing um, my subject to get to that spot, like right on the edge there, because I was like, we don't have a lot of time, and this is like the exact light that I want. So um, this use of layers here, you have like foreground, so you have like this grassy area that I have um, out of focus. So I use depth of field here. And then I have my subject, um, the midground in focus where pulpit rock is and my subject. And the subject is also in the negative space, which you'll notice. Um, and if you also notice that the subject is in the dead center of the photo. So this is a good example of multiple techniques of composition um, being used to compose the shot. But 
layers, especially foreground, midground, and background. And then the photo on the right, I actually took this one in Scotland when I was on a Sony Alpha collective trip. Um, I remember our group was just, I think we were just standing around just hanging out and then we saw this VW, um, the vintage van, and we all got so excited. We were like, oh my gosh, like we need to go take photos of this. I think the owners were like sitting in the car, but they honestly didn't care because probably so many people take photos of their of their van. So I just remember a bunch of us running around taking different shots of, of the van. And I really like this one because I used the the purple flowers as my foreground. And then, you know, the midground, the main focus of the shot is the van. And then in the background, you have this waterfall, the house, um, just like some fall colors in the back. So again, another example of using layers. So you have your foreground, midground, and background. So whenever you're shooting, just try to look for these different elements that you can include into your shot. Rule of thirds is one of the most well-known composition techniques. When you take a photo, um, imagine splitting it up into thirds, um, both horizontally and vertically. And so when you're thinking of rule of thirds, you want to keep in mind that this is a technique that you want to use to help place your subject um, in one of the lines of the thirds so you have a more well-balanced photo. So when you're shooting, it's really helpful to have grid lines on your camera. So I would definitely recommend going to your menu, your settings to turn on the grid lines. Um, a lot of times when you're shooting naturally, you won't even have to think about it. And I think that some of the best shots use rule of thirds. Um, sometimes people think, you know, you have to place your subject in the, in the center, but oftentimes I think placing your subject in the third of a photo can actually be more powerful than placing them in the center. Um, you know, you don't always have to follow this rule and there are definitely exceptions to the rule, but again, keep it in mind um, and it can definitely help you compose a more well-balanced photo. So the first photo here on the left, this was taken in Central California. Um, this was at sunset and this is a really cool spot because this cave has like these three openings. Um, I thought it was pretty cool that the middle one was there was like a perfect spot for a person. So right when I got to this location, I was like, I have to have a subject here. So I placed my subject in the third of the photo, as you can see, he's also in the negative space. So that means you know, he's in the empty space where the water is, so it's not very distracting to the audience. Like right away when I look at this picture, I'm like, oh cool, I see someone standing there. Um, love this photo. also like the light kind of hitting the rock with the colors, like the pastel clouds. Um, definitely one of my favorite cave photos. And then this photo on the right here, this was taken in Yosemite. Another example of rule of thirds. Um, the light here was so nice. I always feel like whenever I do this hike, we get like the best lighting here. So. Love this spot, just another example of rule of thirds. And, you know, if, if you wanted to move this composition over and have your subject in the, in the middle, you definitely can do that too. But I like how the person's in the first third and also how you see L cap in the second third of the photo. So it's just, it just creates a more well-balanced photo here. You're gonna find straight lines and symmetry in almost every scene that you're shooting. So whether that's something that's man-made, like architecture or just natural landscapes outside. Um, there's just something so aesthetically pleasing about shooting these straight lines and making sure that your shot is really symmetric um, that I know I find to be really fun and I just really like shooting these types of scenes. And for me, I personally try to nail a composition in camera when I'm out shooting the field um, so that there's less work for me to do in post. You know, I know that I can always rotate the photo in post, but then that just means you have to crop in more and you're just losing more, um, more framing that you had um, originally. So. If you can, just try to nail the composition in camera. So um, with that being said, if there are straight lines in my shot, I really try to make sure everything's straight. So I like to use like a leveler. Um, you can look for this setting in the, in the menu of your camera. This really helps a lot. And also if you have a subject in your shot and you're trying to make sure that they're centered, make sure you're using your grid lines. Um, even if, you know, maybe to your average person who's not technical or not into photography, they may think like, oh, the subject looks pretty close to centered, but you know, I think a lot of us as photographers are really detail oriented. And when we see that something is slightly off centered when it's supposed to be centered, it can be really, really distracting. So just try to make sure you guys are paying attention to those little details like that. Okay, so this first photo here on the left, um, this is one of my favorite photos that I took in Japan and it's such a unique location. It's actually, I think it's an office building, but I really love the different colorful doors and I've never seen anything like this before. So when we arrived here, I was so excited. And what I was even more excited about was the amount of symmetry in the shot. Like 
I don't know how it maybe just worked out, but also I was keeping this in mind. But you know, sometimes it doesn't always work out how you have how you, how you have it planned. But I have my subject here right in the middle, and above him there's four rows of office buildings, and then below him also four rows. Um, so that just lined up perfectly, and I really wanted him to have a more like natural pose. So I asked him to like walk across, and so. I pretty much split him down the middle between like those two doors. So again, more symmetry. And then if you see the office doors on the left and right, again, more symmetry there. So a shot like this, it's really important to make sure that your lines are straight. Imagine if I posted this picture um, and it's like slightly crooked or maybe my subject is like off to the left a little bit. It's gonna be a little bit distracting, you know? And honestly, it can almost ruin an entire photo. Like a photo that could be so good and so epic um, can just be completely ruined because you know you didn't notice that a photo was crooked or your subject was a little bit off. Another trick that I like to use is when you're using your iPhone um, and you actually hold your thumb at the top of the screen and you, and you pull down, it pulls down a window and then it creates this straight line. And so sometimes when I'm posting on Instagram, I'll like hold my finger at the top of the screen, scroll down, have this line that's created um, from the top, from the bottom of the frame, and then I really make sure that any straight lines are completely straight and nothing's crooked, because that's honestly like, like that's like my worst nightmare is to post a picture and I realize later on that it was crooked or my my subject is a little bit off centered when I was purposely trying to get them right in the middle of the photo. So definitely keep that in mind. Um, I think that's going to help you get a much better composition. And the photo on the right here, this is, you know, another example of symmetry, but now we're we're out in the field, you know, we're out on the coast and this is more of a natural landscape. So sometimes when you're shooting natural landscapes, there might not be straight lines like you see in architecture. So here, you know, like the, the mountains all the way in the back, there's not really a straight line. They're kind of like wavy, a little bit zigzaggy. So I just tried my best to see what was considered straight and what was uh, not crooked. But the main focus of this shot was having my subject pretty much right in the middle of the photo. So my subject is in the dead center of the photo. He's also in the negative space. He really pops. He stands out. Um, I feel like, let's say if he was standing all the way to the left of the photo, like in the whitewash of the of the waves, or, you know, maybe he was standing more in, in the grass where his body was cut off, you know, wasn't in the negative space. I just think it's going to be a much more distracting photo versus this, you know, your viewer looks at this photo and right away their eyes are drawn to the subject. And I just think that this shot's also really cool because it shows like how epic this location is. It shows a sense of scale, which I absolutely love these types of photos. Um, so again, maybe use those, uh, use the grid lines and also use the leveler on your camera. And then if you need to, you can always adjust in post, but definitely pay attention to these small details because it's gonna make a big difference in your composition. Leading lines are lines that lead to the main subject of your image. This also helps highlight or accentuate your subject. Um, examples of this can be lines on a road or a pathway, trees, different things can be leading lines. Um, but I think it's really helpful to look at these examples that I've taken here. So the photo on the left, I took this photo. Um, this is near, this is near Mammoth in the Eastern Sierras. And I think this is when they actually just recently paved the road. So the road was freshly paved, um, it looked super, super clean, and I really liked how, you know, I got very low for this shot. I think I shot this on a 7200, so it's a more compressed shot. You know, like, if, if I was just standing here, the shot was more flat, but because I was using a telephoto lens, that was creating compression, and so I'm basically bringing the foreground, the midground, and the background all together, um, creating, the, creating this more compressed photo. So here I'm using the line of the road as my leading line, so the audience pretty much looks at this photo and the first thing they're looking at is they're looking at the line of the road and that's automatically leading their eye all the way up to the foreground, through the midground, and then to the background, which is the main focus of the shot, um, the mountain peaks. So the line on the road again draws the viewer's eye directly to the mountain peaks. Um, the photo on the right, this is a photo I took of my friend Coco. Um, close by where she lives and I really like this location. Um, I love the light, um, just how it was like hitting the trees here. I like the shadows. Um, and so the leading lines here are the pathway. Um, yeah, the trees as well, but I would say mainly the pathway that she's standing on. Um, and I also liked how I placed her like in this beam of light. 
I think the shot would be maybe not as good if I placed her in the shadows. Um, she would probably get lost. Um, so I really like how we placed her in the beam of light here. Um, she has that, that yellow backpack that kind of pops, so I like that. Um, but yeah, another example of leading lines. So when you're out shooting, you're, there's going to be a lot of natural leading lines. And I think now that you know what to look for, just go out when you're shooting. And I think it's going to help you create a more just a more dynamic shot when you're looking for these leading lines. So those are pretty much the rules and techniques of composition that I use most often. And now hopefully when you guys go on shoot, you can start thinking about these different techniques when you're composing a photo. Something else I want to go over with you guys is just show you an example of, you know, a photo that maybe most people would say, wow, this is a really nice photo, but in my opinion, I think it's a more basic photo. And I want to show you how you can turn a basic photo into an epic photo. This is a photo that I recently took and it's a very wide landscape shot. Um, the setting is really nice. I like the light, um, beautiful scenery, obviously, but I feel like it's missing something and I feel like we can really elevate this shot in so many different ways. So now I'm going to show you what I ended up composing um, as my final shot after, after taking this first shot, which I thought was nice, but you know, I wanted to make the shot even better. So here's an example of how I took a pretty nice shot. Um, but I would still say it was very basic and now I've turned into a photo like this. Um, I would say this shot is very epic um, because there's so many different composition techniques that we talked about um, that I'm using here. Um, I mean right off the bat I can name off a few things already like I'm using a subject, there's leading lines in the foreground here, use of layers, so you know the rocks in the foreground, my subject being the midground, and then you know L cap and just this beautiful light here in the background. Um, symmetry, the subject is in the middle, he's also in the negative space, you know, he's not lost, he definitely pops, even though he's not wearing something bright, it's still very clear where, where he's standing and he's not, he's not creating any sort of distraction for the scene that's around him. So that's something that's very, very important when you're shooting. Um, so, you know, next time you're out shooting, always challenge yourself and really try to find different ways to elevate your photo. I think don't settle for just one photo. Take a photo, evaluate it, you know, check out your surroundings, and see how you can make this photo even better. You guys already know that I love placing subjects in my photos, and one last thing I want to show you is just one of my favorite photos I've ever taken. So this is a photo of my friend Lisa. Um, she's also a member of the Alpha Collective, and we took this during our trip to Vietnam last year. We were actually filming a story um, in collaboration with Sony about the connection we had with our heritage, and just like how it's, you know, how it shaped us into the people that we are today. So. This was a really special trip for us, and we had so much fun making this this film. Um, you know, something I want to note is that my goal as a photographer is to create images that will evoke an emotion from the viewer. So for me, I feel like when you see an epic photo, you want to know the story behind the photo. You know, when you just see like, a, you know, it's a nice photo, it's a little basic, it's nothing special. You see a photo and you're like, okay, cool, next. But when you see an epic photo, you want to know more. You want to know... How did you get this shot? Like, who was there? Um, when did you take this photo? Like, you just want to know everything about it because it's such a powerful image and you know that there's an epic story behind it. So that's kind of how I feel about this specific image here. Um, I'm gonna go over the different techniques that I use in this shot. So in this shot right away, you know, there's there's symmetry here. My subject is in the, in the center of the photo. Um, you know, this is an example of symmetry as well with like the the lines on the boardwalk here on the bridge very very tricky to get straight because you know it's it's kind of at an angle and it's like slightly turning to the right so you have to really choose one area of the bridge like one line here on the boardwalk and just make sure that that's very straight um also leading lines for this shot very very important um the pathway here you know creating a leading line to my subject here and i love that she's wearing the red dress even like the movement of her dress, the mood, you know, the story behind this shot is that I think we both went to this location having high expectations of, you know, a certain type of image that we were going to capture. We we're hoping for like some really nice conditions, you know, like no people there, um, maybe, maybe some nice clouds. But when we arrived, it was pretty much like borderline raining. As you can see, like the, the wood on the, the bridge is pretty much, it's wet and that's how we're able to see the reflection. But you know now looking back on this photo, I, I actually love the mood. Um, I love how the ground is wet. 
it's a completely different shot than I've ever seen of this location. So, you know, even though when we first arrived, we were like pretty down because there were so many people there, but we waited and waited and we were super patient and, you know, really just started firing off like shots. And I just took as many photos as I can once we had that open window. And I was so happy with this photo that we got. All right, so now that you guys have everything you need to create these well-balanced photos, just go out there and shoot. You know, this doesn't mean you necessarily have to go and travel far and wide. You can just start right in your backyard. Um, even, you know, go around your neighborhood, practice on your dog, practice on relatives. Um, you know, it's just mainly about practicing, getting out there, and putting in the time and effort. At the beginning, you're probably going to have to think about these techniques a little bit more when you're shooting. But the more that you practice, the more natural and automatic things are going to be for you. So definitely keep that in mind. Go out, practice, shoot, edit. Most importantly, just have fun with it. I'm so grateful to be able to connect with you guys today and share one of my favorite topics. Thank you again for joining me and I really hope you guys learned something new. I also teach other online workshops and hopefully gonna be continuing my in-person workshops soon. So if you guys ever wanna learn more, please don't hesitate to reach out. Thanks again.